The 900-year anniversary celebrations for the Order of St. John coincided with the last ever Royal Tournament. In recognition of the Order's continual dedication to service, 244 members of St. John were invited to take part in a unique and very special performance. During these times, the Order had become a fighting force to protect pilgrims and to defend the territories of the Holy Land. The Knights moved to Cyprus in 1291. They later established an island fortress in Rhodes where they continued to care for pilgrims. They then moved to Malta, which became home to the Order for 250 years. In England, the Priory at Clerkenwell was established in 1140, but with the Act of Dissolution by Henry VIII, the order was suppressed. The revival of the order's charitable work in the 19th century came about following the lack of organized care on battlefields and no adequate first aid provision for civilian accident victims. In 1877, the association was formed to provide textbooks and training for first aid in the mines and railways. <laughs> Ten years later, the brigade, the black and white uniformed members, was founded as a discipline team to provide first aid, ambulance transport and care in the true traditions of the mottos of the order. Pro fide for the faith, pro utilitate hominum, for the service of mankind. In 1888, Her Majesty Queen Victoria granted a royal charter to the new British order. From that time, the monarch has remained the sovereign head of the Grand Priory of the most venerable order of the Hospital of St. John of Jerusalem to give the order its correct title. The call was given for members of St. John to support Her Majesty's troops in the Boer War. By the end of hostilities in South Africa, over 1,400 members had served the Crown as medical orderlies. Many did not return. In the two world wars, medical and humanitarian support was given to the armed services, prisoners of war, and the civilian population.
The order today has two foundations, the St. John Ambulance and our ophthalmic hospital in Jerusalem. This 80-bedded hospital provides ophthalmic care to everyone without distinction of race, color, or creed. Today, with our 60,000 volunteer members, badgers, cadets, adults, and over 1,300 ambulances and support vehicles, we give over four million hours of voluntary service per year. Many sporting and a host of national and local events would not take place without the attendance of members of St. John Ambulance. Young members make up over 60% of the membership, not only providing first aid and care, but enjoying exciting adventure and leisure activities. The Order of St. John operates in over 40 countries. Its international branches make up our worldwide family of St. John. These countries are represented by their national flags gathered around the outside of the arena this evening. We are privileged tonight that His Royal Highness the Duke of Gloucester, the Grand Prior of the Order, is taking the salute. And giving the salute is Mrs. Jill Scott, Superintendent-in-Chief for St. John Ambulance. And she is ex escorted by the two Deputy Cadets of the Year, Alice Stellman and Laura Hines. Ladies and gentlemen, St. John Ambulance. Thank you to all members of St. John who have made this performance possible, and to Mr. Christopher Rose, who composed the final march, especially for this performance. The pulse is still strong. As we approach the new millennium, providing first aid, transport, and care. Over the years that I have been Grand Prior, I have been frequently impressed by the enthusiasm and energy of the volunteers, both in this country and abroad, and the pride they take in the Order of St. John and the work of its foundations, the ambulance and the hospital in Jerusalem. Of course, at many other functions that are not organized by St. John, I get the reassuring sight of a St. John uniform demonstrating that first aid has been provided and the work of St. John is quietly maintaining the help for which so many thousands have had reason to be thankful. <laughs> 